Today, I got five new fishing hacks for you that you ain't never seen before. Well, maybe you've seen them before, but probably not. Anyway, let's get started and we'll find out. Fishing hack number one. Okay, so I ordered this rod rack off of Amazon. And honestly, it's pretty dang cool. That's the name of it right there. And I ain't even gonna try to say that. It's some Chinamanese name. I don't know. Now, I don't have no affiliation with these people, and I bought this, so I'm not trying to sell it for them. But I saw it on Amazon, and I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. I even did a video about making DIY rod racks years ago, but the interesting thing about this is you only need one. Almost every rod rack out there, you need a top, and you need a bottom. This one, you just need this right here. And that's it. Every one of these little things right here, it has a little rubber pad on it. So it's real grippy. And it has a spring made in it. So you put your rod in it and you let it go and it holds your fishing rod. That's kind of different. You can see what I mean on the picture on the box right there. See the fishing rods? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, there's always people in the comment section that go, that ain't no hack. You bought that. That ain't no hack. Yes, I know it ain't a hack, even though it's really kind of cool and different. But we're fixing to do a hack to this. I mean, it's pretty obvious I got a metal building. I only like drilling holes in this building if I have to. So I'm going to use magnets on this rod holder. I went by Harbor Freight and I bought a couple of packs of magnets. These were 99 cent a piece. And with their $18 rod holder, and I think I got this on sale for $18. So with their rod holder and their magnets, that's 20 bucks. I think double-sided tape would probably hold these magnets on, especially this Gorilla Tape. But I got some epoxy that come from Harbor Freight and it's been in my drawer a while and I need to get rid of it anyway. So we're gonna use the epoxy. And if you've never used epoxy before, all you gotta do is you put out equal portions, 50-50. So if I use one ounce of the B, then I'm gonna have to use one ounce of the A. I mean, it's just that simple. So you squirt some of the A and you squirt some of the B on something that you wanna throw away because it ain't gonna be no good when you're done. And then you mix it up really good. After I get this epoxy mixed up good, I'm gonna take a little stick and I'm gonna rub some on the back of the magnet. Once I get the magnet coated, I'm going to stick it on my rod holder. Okay, so I got the epoxy on the magnets. Now we're just going to have to wait and let this epoxy dry. And it's pretty cold down here. Probably going to take a little bit of time. Now that our epoxy has dried, you can kind of still see it right there, but it's dry. We are going to hang this thing on the wall. We're going to see how it works. I actually really do like this thing. And I only filled it halfway up. You could fill it up. I mean, as long as you're using small rods like this, you can stagger your rods and fill it on up. And the coolest part is, like I said, this one, it only requires one rod holder. Most rod holders, you have to have a top and you have to have a bottom. But this one here is kind of different. And I ain't trying to sell them because I ain't affiliated with them, but I like it. I also like the magnets instead of drilling into my building. Worked out pretty good. What do you call a fish with no legs? I don't know. A fish. Fishing hack number two. My toolbox over here, it becomes a catch-all. And this is like stuff I'm working on, stuff I've already done. I was over here cleaning some of this off and I got to noticing this Velcro. And I used Velcro on my last hack video and I made the clear lure covers, you probably remember. And they turned out cool and all, but I had some Velcro left over. And actually, I even bought some from the Dollar Tree and showed it on the video. And it's only $1.25. This Dollar Tree Velcro is not as nice as this stuff I got from Walmart, but I found out it's pretty dang sticky. This hack here, 
is really simple and you can do it several different ways. I'm using the Dollar Tree Velcro. So you pull the Velcro off of the paper backing, you lay your first piece down sticky side up. Then you pull your second piece off and you stick the sticky side on it to the sticky side of the other piece. Well, when you're done, this is what you end up with. You end up with a piece of Velcro that has one type of Velcro on one side and the other type on the other side. And what you've done, you made you a Velcro strap. And they sell these things, and they're not that cheap. I made three different length Velcro straps. I have that roll of Velcro that come from the Dollar Tree. Oh, my bad. The Dollar and 25 Cent Tree. But seriously, for $1.25, I made three of these things. And the cheapest ones you'll find on Amazon is like $7 all the way up to $20-something. And they come in really handy. All these rods right here, if I wanted to tie a bunch of them together, I could take my Velcro strap. And I just tied 12 Hellcat fishing rods together with that one Velcro tie. By the way, they under a little bit of tension, I'm just saying. But when you're done, all you gotta do is undo it. That thing went off like a bomb. But these Velcro straps for $1.25 are pretty dang awesome. And by the way, the number one use for these Velcro straps is tying up cables. You can still use them for that too, for $1.25. I'm just saying. What did the tuna say at the job interview? I give up. Thanks for the opportunity. Hack number three. On this hack, it's a little bit different than anything you've probably seen. Well, most of you. What this is, is a water-soluble bag for fishing. And if you don't know what water-soluble is, just like those little tablets that you put in your dishwasher, and when the water gets on them, they dissolve. That's basically all these are. They're 60 millimeters by 120 millimeters, which is basically two inches by three inches, give or take. And there's a hundred of them in here. I think I paid ten dollars for these. And you basically get a hundred of these little water soluble bags. And you're probably asking yourself, what good is that? Well, of course, carp fishermen are already using these. But cat fishermen are missing out because they could use these too. The way I'd probably use them is by tying a sinker on a drop line. Like where your sinker drops off a little bit, your hook and your leader is about the same length. But then I drop that sinker in the bag. I mean, there's tons of things you could put in this bag, but I'm going to put some chicken scratch in it. Just pour the chicken scratch right in the bag with the sinker, twist it up tight on the line, and this stuff's water soluble. So if you wet that bag, you should be able to stick it to itself. This stuff really does stick to itself pretty dang well, but be careful because I got too much water on mine right here and it kind of burned a hole through the bag. So I'm gonna have to do it again. All right, so I retied it so there ain't no hole in it. Now you can see the sinker right there in the bottom of the bag. Now we're gonna drop our bag of chicken scratch in some water and we're gonna find out how long it takes for this bag to dissolve and for it to form a little chum pile. Here goes nothing. That actually took less than a minute for that bait to fall out there. That right there is pretty dang cool. You know, a lot of these fishermen nowadays, they like to fish with chicken, and a lot of them like to fish with jello chicken. Well, what if you put your jello in one of these bags like this right here, and then you put chicken on your hook? I just wonder what will happen. We about to find out. Well, it didn't quite have the effect I thought it would, <laughs> but it's still cool. You know, something else that might be cool, what if I put Jello and I put chicken scratch in the same bag? I wonder what happened then. You gotta admit, that's pretty dang interesting. What did the week the fish hate? <sighs> Friday. Get it? Friday. Fishing hack number four.
On this hack, it's pretty simple, and a lot of people know this hack, but everybody don't. Now, sitting here, I got some regular monofilament line. As soon as you cut you some monofilament off of the spool, it curls right back up, kind of like that. You see what I'm saying? Well, if you're tying some kind of special rig, like a drop loop or a Kentucky rig, snail on the hook, whatever, if you're tying a rig, it's kind of getting aggravating because of that. You know, it won't stay straight. But what you can do, take you some line off the spool. Then you can stick it in some warm water. And this water right here come from my house. It's just warm tap water. It's not been boiled or anything. Stick it down in that warm water and you pull it back through your fingers and it'll straighten your line out. But as you can see, this is the line that I put in the warm water and this is the line that I didn't put in the warm water. And there's a huge difference. So the next time you're tying something and the line gets on your nerves, just drop it in some warm water and it'll take the memory out of it. Well, it'll take most of the memory out of it, okay? I'm just saying. Now there is another hack to straightening out line that only I know, but I'm about to show you. First thing you need to do is get out your torch. Then you want to proceed to heat your line. Like I said, get you some warm tap water and fishing hack number five. This right here is like the first anchor I ever built on my channel. And it's kind of small, but don't underestimate it because this little sucker holds good. And actually, I've built like three or four more anchors since then. But this hack's not about this anchor. The hack is about the rope. I also put this on the hack video because I really do use it. It's one of those drop cord clamps and I use it to wrap around my rope to hold it so it ain't a mess all the time. But when you loop up rope, it still gets tangled up. You know what I mean? Well, one of my subscribers posted a video on my Facebook page and I thought it was cool. If you've ever worked around construction people and you see them with drop cords, they make braid wraps. It takes a drop cord and it makes it about a quarter of the original length. What he did on his video, he actually did a braid wrap on his anchor rope. Every time I throw my anchor line out, I always have to fight the line getting tied up and knotted in the boat while I'm putting the line out. So I've got an easy hack for that. Throw a loop on the line, simple, line on top, reach in the hole, pull it through, reach in the hole, pull it through, just keep on doing that. Do that for the whole line. Just throw your anchor out. And it just unknots itself. But that right there is not a bad idea if you think about it. Well, them hacks turned out awesome. If you like this video, then you should probably go check out this video or this video or even this video because they hacks too. Heck, I got like 30 of them. But I'm serious, go check them out because this video is over.